Hi there and welcome. It's Wranglet here back with another video, this time on another piece of hardware and it's the Zulu SCSI device that I'm going to be featuring. More on that in a moment, but why am I even contemplating having a modern uh, SCSI device replacement for SCSI hard disks? Well, the story behind that is that I spent quite a lot of time on another project looking at strange uh, experience I was getting from my backup SCSI cards and after a lot of time and effort it turned out that in fact all of these are broken in different ways and I've been wasting my time looking at the wrong problem. So out with the original SCSI HD drives they are off to be recycled and in with a modern solution but it did make me think also that the other hard disks, physical hard disks that I'm using for my retro computers are getting older and older and I do need some sort of modern replacement and enter the Zulu SCSI. So what is this card exactly? Well, it's the Zulu SCSI RP2040 Compact. And in particular, this is the homebrew version of that. More on that in a moment. But the Zulu SCSI itself is an evolution of the SCSI to SD card line, which, by the way, I have one of and use very successfully in one of my Amigas. Uh, but it also integrates some of the capabilities of the blue SCSI interface as well. Now, the first thing that strikes us here is the small size of the card. It really is tiny, only just bigger than perhaps a credit card size. That's a way to think about it, uh, which makes it really uh, neat to fit into whatever retro gear you have. You can obtain this as a fully built version from the manufacturers who are rabbit hole computing, or you could buy the homebrew version, which is what we've got here, where the surface mount components are mounted for you, but the through the hole components like the sockets that we've got here and jumpers, etc., you have to do for yourself. Um, actually, I even skipped on that and the excellent Kavanaugh's uh, constructed this for me and completed it. Uh, so shout out to you Kavanaugh's if you're watching. Thank you very much for that. So despite its small size, the other thing that, that attracted me to the Zulu SCSI was its small price. These are relatively affordable, certainly compared to uh, trying to locate a physical SCSI hard disk. So I do think this is a viable solution for retro computers that need a SCSI drive, provided that it lives up to its performance uh, being good enough. So that's what I'm going to come back to later in this video. Before I do that, let's just take a quick walk around the card. We've got the 50 pin SCSI connector here. So we attach that straight to our SCSI cable with the rest of the SCSI chain on it. We've got a uh, Berg floppy power connector here to power the card. Although if the SCSI cable is providing termination power, actually that is enough to power the card, something that the SCSI to SD is also capable of doing. So I don't need to connect up a power cable at all. Very handy. I've got a socket here for a micro SD card, uh, and that is where the hard file is gonna get stored that emulates the hard disk. And because it's a hard file, I can take out the SD card, put it in my modern computer, and access the uh, files that are on the hard file on the SD card using something like WinUAE if I'm emulating on an Amiga uh, and access those files natively straight on my modern machine which does make this really rather handy to transfer files between a modern PC and a retro one. What else have I got? Well a couple of jumpers here. Um, this one is to enable termination on the board just as a reminder if you uh, are Connecting up a SCSI chain, either end of the chain needs to be terminated and nothing in the middle needs termination. So if this is the last card in the chain, which oftentimes it will be, you need to enable termination or have some other termination at this end of the chain. 
Uh, we've got another jumper here that I'm going to come back to later on and a header here for the activity light. And right down at the bottom in the center, it's possibly too small to really see, here is a little button that enables the bootloader uh, firmware to be updated. Personally speaking, I haven't needed to do that, but that's what that's for. And we also have a little uh, USB connector here. Again, I haven't used this myself, but I am uh, led to believe that if you connect up a USB connector here into your PC, the Zulu SCSI will provide diagnostic information, debug info, as you're using it as a SCSI device and tell you what SCSI commands it's receiving over the SCSI chain, which is super useful for debugging SCSI issues. So how do I set up the SD card in the first place? Well, it's the usual task of plugging it into your machine. I'm on Windows here and then using the format utility and I'm going to select XFAT as the file system to ensure that I can handle hard disk files over four gigabytes in size. I can give it a volume label if I want. Uh, quick format is fine and start that off and it will format the SD card for me and set up a blank one like I've got open in this window behind. Now in terms of creating a blank hard disk file itself on the SD card, in Windows I can use the command line utility fsutil. Um, to be honest I couldn't get that to work so I'm going to look at an alternative route here using the Zulu SCSI itself. Now it has a neat party trick that if you create a file a text file on the SD card with a particular name, it will create the blank hard disk file for you. So here's the format for that. You need to give the file name creates first and then the size of the hard disk file to create. So 28 gigabytes in my case, could be in megabytes instead for you if you wish. And then the name of the hard file you want to create. So HD and zero for the unit number here. So if I create that text file there, put it on the SD card, put the SD card then into the Zulu SCSI and power it up, it will go off and create the hard disk file. Uh, takes a long time, but it will do it for me. Super. So here's the results of the SD card after that process. You can see it's created my hd0.bin file with a file size here of 29 million kilobytes. So that's our hard disk file. I'm going to change the extension on that file so that I know it is a uh, an image file for a hard disk. There we are. And it's also saved for me, the Zulu SCSI, a log file here. Let's just take a quick look at that. So some initial information about my setup. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on any of that. Uh, then it, here it has located my request to build a 28 gigabyte file and then it's acted on it and uh, 4.3 milliseconds later, which I think is just over 70 minutes later, it has uh, successfully created that image file, uh, which is the hd0.bin file that we were looking at before. So that's how you can uh, create one of these image files, a blank one from scratch, if you are not going to back up a hard disk that you've already got. So now we can go ahead and fill up that image file with whatever we like. So here's a little party trick that this version of the Zulu SCSI can do. And what you can see here is I've connected up a very short SCSI chain, just the Zulu at one end and a rather old but still functioning uh, hard disk on the other with a uh, some rather precious programs and data on it that I want to preserve. Now, what I've done here is to connect the jumper on the initiator uh, jumper or, or connector on the, the header. That's the word I'm looking for, the header on the Zulu SCSI. And that switches the Zulu from being a pseudo hard disk in its own right into actually becoming a SCSI controller. So this is going to act as though it's the computer in the SCSI network and be the controller for it uh, and connect to the hard disk uh, on the SCSI chain. And what it's going to do is identify what hard disk there are on the chain and then image them 
to the SD card here. So this is a really neat way of backing up what you've got on your hard disks without having to expend a lot of effort on it. Um, one thing to bear in mind though is that you need an SD card that is at least as big as the entire capacity of the hard drive. Uh, now I know that's the case for this setup, but if you're using quite a large HD uh, to do uh, that you want to back up, you need to make sure your SD card is even bigger than that. Even if the disk is not entirely full, the process will stop uh, straight away if the capacity of the HD is bigger than the capacity of the disk, regardless of how much usage the disk has. Anyway, um, what have we got here? Well, I'm powering both devices uh, just to make sure that they are powered because I don't have a computer providing the uh, termination power by the SCSI cable. Uh, and that's what this adapter is doing here, is simply providing power to both units. Um, otherwise, you just connect together the chain. I've got termination. Um, termination is on the hard disk here. I have turned it off on the uh, Zulu SCSI. It's, it's such a short chain, it probably only needs termination at one end and it will be fine. But um, let's plug in the power and see what happens. Um, so immediately the activity light comes on saying that we know the thing is working. The um, red light here has gone solid while the hard disk starts up. And we're into this process where the uh, red activity light flashes intermittently showing that the disk is being backed up. Now you probably can't hear it, but the old quantum disk here is clicking away like it's some sort of Geiger counter as it goes through all the different sectors on the disk and uh, transfers them to the hard disk. So that's it. That's all you've got to do to get the backup working. Uh, very helpfully, this Zulu SCSI also writes a log file onto the SD card at the same time as it's creating the disk image just to tell you what it's done. Uh, and from other experience, uh, that also shows if there are any sectors it was unable to copy. Super helpful. The Zulu SCSI is, of course, a fully electronic solution to a, a SCSI drive. There are no moving parts. And because of that, it's completely silent. Now, that might mean that you miss out on the click, click, click sound that your original hard disk made as the drive heads moved around. But the Zulu SCSI does have a solution even to that issue. So if you're really nostalgic for that clicking sound, down here on the PCB is a space for a piezo buzzer. And if you fit one of these in the place on the PCB there, along with a jumper to disable it if you get tired of it, the uh, Zulu SCSI will, in fact, uh, emit the clicks and emulate the sound of a, an original SCSI hard drive, not just the action of it. Fantastic. So the Zulu SCSI has got some really neat features, but do they matter that much compared to performance? I had a look at the performance side of the equation and ran some benchmarks for you. Just to say, the machine I was testing on here was the Amiga A4000T, which has an onboard SCSI 2 controller. SCSI 2 meaning that its theoretical maximum transfer rate is 10 megabytes per second. What results did I get? Well, to begin with, I was running tests using SysSpeed, and the figures here are in megabytes per second. The first two sets of results for creating files and writing files. And I should say this column that we're looking at here is when I had the SCSI controller on the A4000T in so-called normal mode and running asynchronously. So asynchronous SCSI transfers. As you can see, the speed that I achieved was a little over three megabytes per second, which is what I would describe as okay. Certainly not outstanding, it's all right, uh, given a SCSI 2 controller, but it doesn't shoot the lights out. But that's writing to files. What about reading files? Well, considerably faster here, a little over 7 megabytes per second. That's looking a lot more like it, beginning to get somewhere close to the theoretical maximum. 
but sysspeed also tells us raw read speed and there I'm reading over 9 megabytes per second so this controller is fast it is reading nearly the maximum transfer rate that SCSI 2 is capable of I also ran the test in sysinfo again in megabytes per second and that achieved a score a little over 7 megabytes per second almost 7.5 although I know some people question exactly how accurate sysinfo is on its speed settings. So that was the default settings for the SCSI controller, normal and asynchronous settings. I did think that I would be able to improve on this by switching normal to so-called fast mode on the SCSI controller or into synchronous transfers. Certainly my experience with other SCSI devices is using synchronous transfers results in a speed boost. But here's the weird thing. Actually, any other option I tried worsened performance and quite noticeably worsened performance. So actually the default settings on the A4000T worked the best. Now, of course, your experience may well be different to mine. Uh, you may well be using a different SCSI controller and get different performance out of that. And equally, I wasn't using a particularly high performance SD card. It was just a cheap generic one. So certainly my scores could be improved upon. But I think the takeaway is read speed is really pretty creditable. Write speed, mm, just slightly disappointing. So it's time to give the Wrangler rating for the Zulu SCSI. What is my impression overall of this card? Well, to cut to the chase, I really am very impressed with the Zulu SCSI. I love, amongst other things, its small size, the fact that I can power it straight off the SCSI cable, and I love the ability through the initiator jumper to be able to clone an existing hard disk straight onto SD with very little user intervention. It's also got some other neat features like the ability to output diagnostic information and to replicate the sound of a hard drive as well. Perhaps the most compelling feature is the price as well. Very affordable at the time of uh, recording this between $40 and $50 uh, depending on the version of the Zulu SCSI uh, compact that you get. The read performance really is as good as you could reasonably expect uh, operating on a SCSI 2 uh, device. But one thing I would call out is the write performance is not quite as impressive. Perhaps that's one area that this car could be improved upon. But overall, this is a very, very impressive bit of kit. And uh, I really would commend rabbit hole computing for creating it. I think it's a fantastic addition to retro computing. So that's it for this video. Do join me again next time. But for now, goodbye.